Now that we can move the ball, I'm gonna try to move the ball with the arrow keys on my keyboard so that we can control the ball as the player. In order to do that, we need a package, which is called input system. Let's install that package in our project so you can see how to import packages as well. From the window tab, click on package manager. In the opening window, change the filter to unity registry so that we can see all of the packages and search for input system. Once you found it, click install from here and Unity may ask you to restart the editor. Click yes and wait for it. All right, now that we installed the package, we can import it in the script. I'm gonna say using Unity engine input system Then we will call another function on move. This function can get a movement value as a parameter and we can hold the value with a vector object. Here say vector2 movement vector and we can use the get method to call the vector2 since we are only tracking movement on x and y. I want to hold the x and y value separately so I'm gonna declare two new variables up here movement x and movement y, and get the values from the vector right here. So we can say movement x equals to movement vector dot x, and movement y equals to movement vector dot y. Now we are able to update the force with the input data. To do that, I'm gonna create a new vector tree movement and create a new vector tree with that x and y value. You can give zero for that because we don't want any movement on that direction. And change this one with moment. All right, come back to Unity and let's try to run this game. Nothing happens because again, we forgot to give an input component to the sphere. Before doing that, if you are using Windows, you need to make one more adjustment. From File, Open Build Settings, in the Architecture field, be sure that x86 64 is selected. If you are on a Mac, like me, you don't need to change anything. OK, done. Select the sphere, and in the Inspector panel, we gotta add a new component, Player Input. I'll create a new folder again for the input files. So I'll go into the Assets folder, right click, and select folder. I will call this one input. Now you can come here and click create actions and select the input folder we just created. So you can see we can organize the inputs like keystrokes from here. To define the actions that trigger something, you need to create an input actions asset and link certain keys or buttons to an action name. The input system has already a default template for the arrow keys, so we don't have to do that for now. Okay, now we also have the input actions. Hit the play button. And yeah, it worked. I can move the ball with the arrow keys now. For the mobile games, we will just change the input types. This was just an example. Instead of keystrokes, we will look for phone orientation, for example. We're gonna discuss that in the future. For now, enjoy your minigame.